In today's video, we're gonna go over some of the differences between the 10.25 gauge and the 7.8 gauge. And we're gonna kind of show the big differences in what we like and what we don't like on these two gauges. So let's get into it. To fire up your gauge without starting your sled, you're just gonna to wanna to make sure your kill switch is down and then you're just gonna tap on the start button and that's gonna fire up your gauge and you're gonna have a full 10 minutes to work with the gauge without the engine running. There's the splash screen. Okay, now I have the phone hooked up and you get this on the screen and you can use this okay Gonna push OK. By highlighting the zoom out, you can zoom out with the OK button. Really nice. If you're in the go mode, then it's going to be track up, or basically the your arrow is always going to be going straight, and then the, the map will turn as you go around corners. But if you're not in the go mode, then it ends up being... Um, north up. Just hit this switcher button. This is the one here and it's going to switch between all the different pages that you have set up. So there's like music and that pulls the music right off of my phone there. Um, and of course you can play and pause all that right from your left hand here. Um, you do have to have your your Bluetooth uh, headset set up to hear that of course. But um, and then you push it again and it's gonna to switch to your next page. There's your, your current ride. Or you can have stats from uh, trip A or trip B. Um, and then you push it again and it'll go back to your, your main page. And of course, a lot of this is customizable. But um, that's kind of nice that you can just hit one button and just go between these four kind of saved pages as you're riding. Really nice feature. Gonna compare that to um, a Mach Z with the uh, 7.8 premium gauge. Um, big difference, in my opinion, is is the switch gear. Um, this is fantastic. All these different switches it gives you the ability to do everything on the fly. Um, you don't have to think too much once you understand how everything works. With the Moxie, you got the joystick down here. It's not nearly as good as this setup here. Um, overall, I really, really, really like this compared to the Moxie setup. However, I am gonna show you some tricks and how you kinda can set up your Moxie or 7.8 gauge um, to make it a little more user-friendly um, for when you're riding. Um, so that's about it. Let's just give this another uh, quick quick try here. So basically we let it time out. The phone is still connected. Um, the phone probably locked by this time. Let's just see what happens. We're gonna keep our kill switch down and we're gonna give this a, a just a quick push of the starter and it fires everything back up. You get the nice splash screen and it looks like my phone started charging but it looks like it is locked over there so i'm gonna guess that this is probably not gonna connect let's see what happens so it's connecting by by bluetooth that's great there's the break-in um but it's not connecting because I think my phone is, is locked and that's why it's just gonna sit there and not connect. So that is one of the negatives about this uh, setup. The G5 has a 10 minute timeout. Um, I've been timing it and it looks like it's a full 10 minutes. So you got a full 10 minutes to kind of talk on the trail side before this times out. And once this times out, your, your phone is going to lock screen. And then you're, when you go to take off, you're gonna get this issue. So um, basically all you gotta do is just disconnect it and connect it back up. Um, basically unplug the USB, plug it back in. And um, 
I don't know if I can do that, but let's try it. It hooks right back up. You get this and you can just hit navigation and it's gonna take you right back to your last ride. So you're gonna resume. Your gauge is gonna time out after 10 minutes. After you stop the sled, it has 10 minutes to go. At least that's what I've been noticing on the G5. I believe it's only maybe five minutes on the Mach Z, but I'm gonna test that next. Um, now, a way around that is simply to just take your iPhone and just make it so the screen will not lock. So you can go into your settings, go into your display and make it so the screen says never when it under the lock area. And so the screen is never gonna lock. And then what I would recommend is take your brightness of your screen and turn it all the way down to dim. Um, therefore, if, you, if your sled times out after 10 minutes and you leave your, your, your phone in the glove box, um, when your phone comes back, it wakes back up, it's gonna be dim, but it won't lock. Should still have plenty of power. And then when you start the sled back up, it, it, it'll automatically reconnect to your phone because your phone still is unlocked and it still has the BRP Go app running in the phone. Um, so that's really the, the big thing to uh, take away here is the BRP Go app always has to be running on your phone and the phone has to be unlocked. So when you're getting ready to leave the house, open your phone, open the BRP Go app, plug in your USB, and then you're gonna get the, uh, the USB uh, screen and then put it in your glove box and it's good to go. And, and it should be connected the whole day um, unless it times out after 10 minutes and, you, and your screen locks. So if you do those steps by basically making your screen not lock, that's gonna save your reconnection time every time you take off after a 10 minute period. If you only stop for say eight minutes and then you tape up, take off, it's fine because this screen will not time out. Um, as long as this screen doesn't time out, the iPhone can't lock. Um, so that's kind of how it works. That's what we've been finding. Now, um, another little tip that I think is probably smart. A, a lot of guys have older iPhones. I know we all have a couple of phones. So I've got like an old iPhone SE here, a, a 2022 uh, iPhone SE, just a basic phone. Um, and that phone, you can just kind of dedicate that phone to being in your glove box. And then you can keep your primary phone like in your code if you want, if you still want to just have that separated out from this system. Because this phone here has to not only be plugged in with a USB cable, it also has to be connected via Bluetooth. It has to have those two connections for everything to work. So, um, you know, it, it, it kind of makes sense. Just use a dedicated phone, maybe your old phone, because you really can't use that phone all day. I mean, you can, but it becomes a little cumbersome taking the phone out, putting the phone back in, taking the phone out, putting it back in if you want to take pictures or, or look at your texts. So it's, it's almost easier to just have a dedicated phone, leave it in your glove box, and then keep your primary phone in your pocket. Um, for texting and phone calls and, and pictures and all that stuff. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives an overall rundown of the, uh, the beautiful new uh, G5 gauge. I would have liked to see in the, um, the, uh, the trip uh, specs, um, I would have liked to see uh, MPG, miles per gallon. Um, I haven't been able to find that anywhere in the, uh, the ride specs. Um, you got your trip A, your trip B. Um, I mean, there's trip A, trip B, and C. You've got average speed, duration, and um, distance, but no MPG. Um, I don't know if it's because this is an 850 and maybe, you know, two stroke. Maybe it's just not something they put in the software, but um, 
Current ride is really nice because it's always going to give you your current ride and you're always going to have your trip A, trip B. You can also slide this over if, if uh, you didn't know that and just give you your full screen or you can do it with the, the switcher over here by just switching through your pages. Um, I, um, and of course there's a lot of little customization you can do here, but that, that's for another video. Um, I like that my Mach Z 7.8 gauge has MPG. It has a average MPG, um, instant MPG, and then it, it, it kind of gives you like your overall seasonal MPG if you want to, uh, do it that way by saving your, maybe your trip B for a whole season. Um, I kind of like that when we go on trips to to be able to kind of say, hey, I'm getting 14 miles of the gallon. I'm getting 16 miles of the gallon. Of course, I'm nowhere near that the way I ride. I would have liked to see in the ride stats, miles per gallon, maybe an average of miles per gallon. Um, that would have been nice. Now we're gonna show the 7.8 gauge on the Mach Z and just kind of compare it to the 10.25 gauge on the G5. Obviously, the big difference is the screen size. It, um, it's just a lot bigger and it just works a lot nicer. But as far as the BRP Go app uh, integration, it's very similar between the two sleds. The joystick setup on the Mach Z is just not nearly as good as the left hand switch gear on the G5. On the Mach Z, and this is the 7.8 gauge. Same thing, kill switch down, hit the start button, and uh, this powers it up. Um, and if you want to get rid of the warning sign that pops up right away, just push down on that, and it gets rid of your warning sign right away. As you can see, my phone is hooked up, and the app is up, uh, the BRP Go app is up. So you can see it loading. Um, see Bluetooth waiting to connect. And I think that's connected now. And it should be... Okay, so did you notice that? That just went into the uh, USB mode. So that means it's connected. And um, so I'm just gonna work with the joystick here and I'm going to hit the home button and I'm gonna just push up on the joystick to go up to BRP uh, connect select that hit OK and there's my map um, I've got it set so you can just turn the wheel to zoom in and out which is what I like and it's really nice. Um, and then I kind of leave it in that mode and then I use this button here to, um, and as you can see, it's actually turning a little bit because I'm not moving. Uh, just so you know, this mode here, it's the same on uh, both gauges, be it 10, 10 and a quarter or 7.8. Uh, um, in this mode, I'm in go mode, and in go mode, you can choose 2D or 3D, and the map, your arrow is always gonna point, point forward. So it's kind of what they might call track up. Um, so um, it's basically, the whole map is going to turn in the background, but you're always gonna be going forward. Whereas if you're not in go mode, if you're just in map mode, what it'll look like is north up. And you can turn that with your fingers, I believe, with north up. Um, at least on the app you can, I know that. But um, generally it's north up, and then if you turn it a little bit, what'll happen is you'll get a little, a little uh, compass in the corner and you can tap on it and it'll become north up again if you happen to turn it. Um, but that's map mode. That's generally north up. And this mode is generally track up. Just, just a little bit of a distinction there. Um, so if I push this button here, this is kind of like the, the uh, I call it the app switcher, but it's basically, it switches between modes. So this is the mapping mode. If I push this, 
it's going to let me choose another window. So I'm going to go downward and I'm going to select my stats because I like to see my stats. So there's my stats. That's trip A. So that's what I generally would, would want to look at while I'm riding. Um, the nice thing about the 7.8 is it has your, your fuel economy, your average, your instant, and um, your max. It's got a lot more going on there. So if you choose that as your second mode, every time you push this switcher uh, button here, it's going to toggle between that page and your map page. Um, and again, if you, if you didn't want to have maps here, you could have your music. And then this button would toggle between your stats page and your music. But right now, this is the way I tend to like it. So I can be riding using my, my navigation. I can see all my pertinent information over here. I can see my mapping. I can zoom in and out by just turning the wheel. So that's real easy on the fly. And then if I just want to quickly see my mileage and my stats, I can just push this button while I'm riding and my stats pull up. So this is how I like mine. Um, and uh, again, you, you don't have to have stats. You could go back, you could hit the home button, go back and choose something else. Um, you could choose your music as your option. Um, let's just see. I don't think I have my music. Yeah, see, I don't have a, a helmet hooked up at this point. I have a different setup for my music. Um, but see, it actually did pull up my music. So um, you can now push the button. Oh, timed out. So that's exactly five minutes. Um, this 7.8 gauge on the Mach Z has a five minute timeout, whereas the G5 with the 10 and a quarter gauge has a 10 minute timeout. So those are the differences. Okay, now here's a good, here's a good example. Um, my sled timed out. The phone here has not locked yet, but that's probably gonna lock in a certain amount of time. But since it's not locked, as long as I fire this gauge back up, that BRP connect is going to connect because that's up and it's plugged in. Um, okay, I just push that, gets rid of the, uh, the uh, warning, and then you're good to go and you can see it loading. And so, you know, it's, it's loading Bluetooth and it's loading the gauge. Um, this is just like you're driving away. So let's just see what that does for us um, as far as connecting and we'll watch the phone because you'll see the phone's going to connect. Um, as soon as this connects, you'll see the phone connect. There you go. So the phone's connected. That means the gauge is connected. Now, it kind of leaves you in this window. So you do have to kind of hit your home button here. That, that's what I'm calling home button, just pushing down. And then it's going to take you back and you're gonna have to choose what you want. So if I choose my stats for one, and then I push the map, uh, the uh, switcher button, that should take me back to, yeah, that takes me back to my maps. You gotta hit okay. And then you're back to your maps and I can zoom in and out with my wheel because it actually gives you the, the words on the bottom if you're in that mode, turn wheel to zoom in and out. Now, if I don't want that there, I can, um, I think I hit the home again and then it gives me more options. See, I, because I have the plus and minus lit up, that's why if I push it there, the wheel will work that. But if I don't want that, I can go down to there. I can go down to there. I don't know if you can see that very good. See, I can go to 2D. If I push the home button, see, it'll go from 2D to 3D. I can um, go back over here and exit. Um, but basically, I like to push that. And then as soon as you push that plus or minus, it'll stay in that turn wheel to zoom mode because I think that's probably the simplest for me because I always like to, when we get on the bigger trails, I like to zoom out to get a, an overall picture. And then, and then I like to zoom in, you know, sometimes as well. 
and it's just so easy when you got the wheel set in that mode while you're riding. And then of course, you just push this switcher button and it takes you back to your your other app that you would, it's not really an app, but it's basically the other mode, which is more part of the sled. So when you push this, it switches between the app on your phone and how what gauge you have set up on the sled. Um, and for instance, I think I could have trip B or I could have my total. And, it, and again, it'll go between maps and total. So um, let's just see if I can go back and choose. Yeah, and I could have music as, my, as, as, as uh, the other window, um, or I could have my phone as the other window, but um, mine is not uh, connected as far as I don't have a helmet connected. Um, and of course, that's, that's the BRP Go. Or you can just go back to home and you could just have that. So now if I push it, it'll go between maps and just your full gauges. And you know, some people might just like that. They might not want to see their stats. So you just want to see your full gauges because then you get the, uh, you get the digital uh, coolant. Um, I think you get the digital coolant there. Yeah, and then see when you go to there, you get RPMs. And when you go back, you get the, the uh, digital coolant. Um, you know, of course you got your coolant bars at the top anyways, but if you want digital, then you need the full screen for that. Um, so, and the other thing too is, is you do have your trip A over here, or you could display trip B over here, um, or your overall odometer over here. So, a lot of times if you have your trip A over here, you don't really need your stats over here. So, um, you know, you don't need it in two places really. So, if I click stats, See, this would, this would be kind of interesting because I could have A over here and I could have my total over here. Um, and the way you change that is you, um, you look at this and if you, if you go down, it zeroes it out. If you go up, that makes it predominant. So if, and that's on here. So if I push up on here, like this little icon shows you to do, you push up and see, then it changes this display to your, to what this window is. Now let's say I want this to display trip B, so you're just gonna toggle over, and again, you just push up on this, and then it changes to trip B. And uh, in general, um, okay, she timed out again, so another five minutes.